Things are Dr. Ben to you. The human mind is like a cave. Beyond the light, there are dark passageways and mysterious recesses. I, Dr. Daniel Danfield, have explored those unknown retreats and know their secrets. Dr. Daniel Danfield, authority on crime psychology, has an unhappy faculty for getting himself mixed up in hazardous predicaments because of his astonishing revelations regarding the workings of the criminal mind. As our story opens, we find Dr. Danfield in his office dictating to his pretty young secretary, Rusty Fairfax. Period paragraph. And the facts that I'm about to relate will definitely prove my theory that even seasoned criminals are often influenced by outside agencies. The opening incident took place in an abandoned warehouse some few weeks ago. A man and a woman were target practicing with a pistol. Okay, Nick, wait a minute. I'll take a look at the target. Huh? How am I doing? Well, you're doing all right, Nicky boy. You're doing all right. Eight bullseyes out of ten shots. Yeah? Not bad, huh, Trixie? Not bad at all, Nick. Well, I figured you'd get better with a little practice. Guess we can handle that bank job any time now. Why, sure. Bank job? Yeah. The First National Trust. Remember? Oh, Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. Uh, look, Trixie, let's forget the bank job, huh? Well, look, I got an in on the numbers racket with Bugs Flambeau. Bugs and... Flambeau, that small-time punk. Oh, okay, then we'll get into something else. Uh, banks is out of my line, Trixie. Well, I... they're going to be in your line from now on, big boy. Now get that and get it straight. Oh, listen, Trixie. You I... listen, you two-timing lug. Dixie Cabot don't waste her time on nobody and then let him walk out on her, see? Nobody. Okay, Trixie, okay. It's tied up with me so that I get you out of the small time. Okay. So I went to work and I began teaching you the angles. All right. So now we're ready to move and you ain't working, see? Yeah, but you didn't say nothing about a bank job. Didn't I? Well, I'm saying it now. It's the First National Trust tomorrow at noon. Or do you still want to go back to the numbers racket? No, Trixie, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I, Nicky boy? I guess you don't know, Trixie Talbot. I guess maybe you forgot how straight she can shoot. Let me show you something, Nicky boy. <laughs> you see what I mean, Nicky boy? Yeah, 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 I see. Both of them right in the bullseye. Oh, you're good all right, Trixie. You're darn right I'm good. I got a reputation and I'm keeping it. Nobody ain't going to say they walked out on Trixie Talbot. She can't afford to have that kind of talk going around. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, Trixie. You, you, you got a reputation to think of. I like you, Nicky boy. I figured you were smart. I figured we could go places together. That's why I let you come in with me. Sure, Trixie. You, you give me a chance, all right. I ain't forgetting it. Hmm. Come here, Nicky boy. Yeah, Trixie? Put your arms around me. Yeah. Now, you see what I mean, Nicky boy? Yeah. You're all right, Trixie. See, I'm crazy about you. Mm -hmm. That's better. We'll get along, big boy. Oh, sure, sure, Trixie. We'll get along, all right. Tomorrow at noon, we begin moving in on the big time. We start going places, you and me. Tomorrow at noon. Yeah? This is it, Nick. Yeah. All set? Sure, sure, sure. I'm all set. Let's get going. Take it easy, big boy. Don't get nervous. Remember what you're supposed to do? Yeah, yeah. We've been over it enough times. What are we waiting for? All right, Nicky boy. Relax now. Hold the bank book in your left hand like you was going to make a deposit. Keep the other hand on the heat in your pocket. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Come on. Okay, let's go. Hey. There's a cop. Shut up. That guy'd fall over and have fainted. He thought there was going to be a stick-up. Well, here we are, dear. Give the man your book. Yeah. 
Okay, pal. This is a stick-up. Don't move or you'll get it. Uh, y- yes, sir. What do you want? What do you think we want, chump? Shove that gold beans up this way. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now get in the vault and bring out everything you can carry. No, forget that, Trixie. We got all Shut the... up. Go on, you. Yes, ma'am. And don't forget there's a gun put in your back. Trixie, look. The cop. Forget the cop. I said he ain't going to... All right, right. you two. Drop those guns. Why, you dumb flat foot up. Trixie, don't! <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Second act of Danger, Doctor Danfield. Well, that's the story of the holdout, Doc. You got any ideas so far? Indeed, I have, Captain Otis. First of all, if this bank robber was a seasoned criminal, you should have no difficulty in establishing his identity. That's the point entirely. We've got files and records on every daylight bank robber in the country. This pair didn't follow the customary pattern at all. That's why we thought you might be interested. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Miss Fairfax? I think you're sticking your chin out if you want to know. Captain Otis has got something else in mind besides asking your advice on the workings of the criminal mind. Miss Fairfax, such blunt frankness at a time like oh, this. Don't young lady, Doc. As a matter of fact, she's right. I've uh, got something else in mind. You want to hear it? By all means, Captain Otis. Good. For more than a week, my boys have been bringing in and questioning every known hold-up man in the city. So far, they haven't got the first base. The way I see it, they've been looking in the wrong places for the wrong kind of a guy. That's a logical deduction, Captain. Yesterday, a young trooper, Sidney Richards, in an upstate town, noticed smoke coming from what he supposed was an abandoned house. Went up to investigate and hasn't been heard from since. Wait a minute. If he hasn't been heard from since, how do you know he saw smoke? And how do you know he went up to investigate? It's logical that what happened, Miss Fairfax, that's what happened. We found the tire mounts of his motorbike going up the lane that leads into the house, but none returning. So you assume that whoever was living in the house uh, prevented young Richards from returning? That's exactly what we think, Doc. Well, why don't you go up there and find out, for heaven's sake? For a very definite reason, Miss Fairfax. Suppose the people who are living in the house are our bank robbers. Suppose they've taken Trooper Richards prisoner and holding him hostage. Suppose they are. They can't hold him forever. What are you going to do, just sit around and wait? Miss Fairfax, may I make a suggestion? Sure, Dan, go ahead. Stop asking so many questions. Let Captain Otis finish his story. All right. The life of one state trooper, Miss Fairfax, is worth the lives of a dozen criminals. We have a plan whereby we can keep young Richards alive. Go on, Captain. Two days ago, the Boston police captured one of the most ruthless killers this country has ever known. You've probably heard of him. He's called the Professor. The Professor? Yes, a very unusual type. For years, I'd hoped for the chance to study him. Doc, we're going to give you that chance. The Professor is being held incommunicado by the Boston police. We want you to go up there and look him over. Splendid, splendid. I'll leave at once. Uh, just a minute, Doc. That's only half the deal. Here it comes. Assuming that the people in the abandoned house are our bank robbers and that they're holding Trooper Richards as hostage... There's only one person who could get to them without arousing their suspicions. I think I'm beginning to understand, Captain. You want me to assume the identity of the professor and make a call on your fugitive. That's it, Doc. You kind of look like the professor. He's a smooth-acting gent, and so are you. No, don't do it, Dan. Miss Fairfax, please, there'll be no danger. No danger? Do you know what you're saying? The first thing those two are going to ask is, how did you know they were hiding in that house? We're prepared for that, Miss Fairfax. Two days from now, there'll be a daring daylight holdup in the neighboring town of Bolton. The crime will be attributed to the professor. The professor, but you said that he was... The crime will merely be attributed to the professor. Newspapers and radio broadcasts will attest to that fact. Excellent, excellent. It'll only be natural for the professor to take refuge in the abandoned house. That's it, Doc. Those two fugitives did. Why not the professor? I still say it's crazy. What if the fugitives had met the professor before? What if It isn't likely that any small-time operators would know a big shot like the professor by sight. 
Be be careful not to let them. Quite right, Captain. Besides, this will give me a splendid opportunity to study some unusual types at close hand. Dan, you can't go. Nonsense, Miss Fairfax. A man's life is at stake. Yours will be, too, if you're sucker enough to agree to this plan. Anyway, your birds will probably have flown by the time you get there. There's not a chance of that. The house is being watched day and night. So you see, Miss Fairfax, it's quite safe. It isn't. You'll be murdered. I know you will. And if I don't go, Trooper Richards will be murdered. Well, then I'm going, too. Of course you're not going. I am. I'm going to call Mario. Miss Fairfax, try and be reasonable for a change. Mario's on his vacation, you know that. Anyway, the plan wouldn't work if three of us attempted to take refuge in the abandoned house. Come along, Captain. We'll catch the first plane to Boston. Dan, come back here. Oh, that crazy idiot. Hello, operator. I want Western Union. Western Union? I want to send a telegram to Mario Consoletti. Hi, Nicky boy. Come on in. I'll be Richard this morning. Uh, okay, I guess. Look, Trixie, do you have to keep the guy tied up all the time? Do we have to keep him tied up? Oh, Nicky, boy, sometimes I think you've got softening of the brain. Okay, maybe I have. Maybe having to stay here cooped up in this lousy dump is driving me nuts. Maybe Shut we... up. No, I want to get out of here. I was a sucker to listen to you in the first place. You got anything else to say, Nicky, boy? Don't, Trixie. Put the gun away. Yeah, I'll put it away. But one more crack out of you, chum, and the next time I don't miss. Okay, Trixie, okay. You don't need to worry about me. I better not need to worry about you, you dumb punk. If it went for me, you'd be cooling your shins in a cell right now. Yeah, I, I know it, Trixie. You're right. Forget I said anything, will you? <laughs> you better crawl, you little weasel. This is a thanks I get for putting you in the big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if we could only get out of here... We'll get out of here when the heat's off. Not until... But suppose they find us. Oh, don't be a dope. I've had this hideout case for a week. Nobody will find us here. Yeah? The motor cop did. All right, so the motor cop found us. Why? Because you were dumb enough to light a fire. I just for that, I ought to shoot your ears off, you oh, forget it, will you? I already admitted it was my fault, didn't I? Yeah, that's a big help admitting it. How do I know you will pull some other dumb trick? I won't. Trixie, so help me. You better not. But how long do we have to stay here anyway? Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Depends on how things look. Two more days? Look, Trixie, that cop's going to be missed. They're going to come looking for us. Madam, yeah, we're in the driver's seat, no matter which way you figure it. Anybody comes here looking for that cop, we'll make a deal with them. Uh, you mean? Yeah, I mean. What do you suppose we've been keeping him alive for? Now, quit asking so many questions. He ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah. I, gu I guess you're right, Trixie. If they was looking for the cop, we'd have heard it on the radio. Sure we would. The battery's brand new. Turn it on. Let's have some music. Sure. Okay, Tracy. I'll, I'll turn it on. And it has now become definitely established that the lone bandit who shot and killed the paymaster of the Roberts Lumber Mill was the gangster known as the Professor. State police are making an intensive search of the countryside near Bolton. Well, how do you like that? The Professor's operating again, and in Bolton, too. The Professor? I thought he was laying low after the Chicago job. Well, looks like you got tired of laying low, Nicky boy. Oh, them dumb cops. Thinking they can catch the professor. Oh, Nicky boy, there's a character I'd like to meet. Him and me could go places together. Yes, sir, there's a guy who's got what it takes. You, you ain't never met him, Tricky? Of course I ain't. There's few that have. He's a smart operator, that lad. You ought to study the professor's technique. Maybe it'll get someplace. Oh, Trixie, ain't, ain't I doing all right? That's the best. Yes, sir. He and me could go places together. Yes, Trixie. Hey, what's this? It's an automobile. Look, look, it's going up the lane. It's the cops. I knew Shut they... up. Don't get us. We ain't got a chance. I oh, know shut they... up, I say, you dumb cluck. That ain't no cop. What do you mean, it ain't no cop? Because there's only one of them. You think a cop would come driving up here in broad daylight like that? Some punk has lost his way, or maybe wants a drink of water or something. Oh, what are we going to do? If he sees that trooper... He won't see no trooper. Go and open the door. What are we going to do? 
What do you got your gun out for? Never mind. Go on and do as I say. Pritchie. Pritchie, you ain't gonna... Ain't I? Nicky, boy, you got a lot of learning in this business. You might just as well begin now. Open the door. No. No, Pritchie, look. I I'll talk to him. Maybe I can turn him away. Oh, oh you punk. You do like I say. Do I blast you, proof? Okay. Okay, Trixie. I'll open it. Just a moment. We'll return to the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Of Danger, Dr. Danfield. You punk. You do like I say, or do I blast you too? Okay. Okay, Trixie. I'll open it. Yeah? What do you want? Well, for a moment you rather startled me. I thought there was no one at home. What do you want? I was wondering if I could use your telephone. You see, I'm lost. Come in. Come on in. Thank you. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know there was a lady here. You guessed right. There ain't. Okay. Who sent you? Sent me? I don't believe I understand. You see, I was on my way. Come on, come on. Quit stalling. Before I knock you off, I want the answer to a few questions. Knock me off? You mean you intend shooting me with that gun? You catch on fast, copper. Copper? My dear young lady, are you referring to me as a police officer? Doctor, you sure put on a smooth act. Hey, Nick. Yeah, Trixie? See what he's got in that bag. Okay, give me the bag, bud. But look here. Give me the bag. Very well. There you are, my man. Thanks. What's in it, Nick? Jeepers. Well, what is it? What is it? Take a look. Well, I'm a green bag. Bundles of them. Oh, come. There isn't so much there. I I like to call that my small change purse. Small change? Say, who are you anyway? Trixie. I know. That radio broadcast. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me look this lug over. The radio broadcast give a detailed description of the Professor Trixie? How did you know my name? My dear girl, your uh, associate here called you Trixie at least three times since I entered the house. Oh, he did? Yes, and he referred to, uh, rather, you referred to him as Nick. Trixie and Nick. Could it be... Uh, no. Trixie Talbot would never allow herself to become involved with... Uh, oh, forgive me, I've said too much. You ain't said nothing. What's the matter with Trixie Talbot? There's nothing wrong with Trixie Talbot. Oh, I get it. Hey, Nick. Yes, yeah, Trixie? You go on outside and take a look around. Oh, but look, ain't I go? Go on, go on, quit arguing. Okay, Trixie, you don't have to get sore. Well, that's better. Now, shall I finish what I was about to say, Trixie? You don't need to, I know. So you're him, huh? You're the professor. At your service, my dear. I like that. At your service, he says. Yes, sir, professor, you're just like they said, a real gentleman. Thank you, my dear. Sit down, Professor. Over here. We got a lot to talk about. Yes, sir. We got to get acquainted. Can't you drive a little faster, Mario? Dr. Danfield may be dead by now. No, not the doc. <laughs> He's a very funny fellow, the doc. Sometimes I think maybe he never dies. Maybe it's funny to you, but it isn't to me. Dr. Danfield's in danger, and we've got to save him. Save him? <laughs> I think maybe the doc is going to save us before we get through. <laughs> oh, stop that laughing. I'm worried. You don't want to see the doctor get hurt, the Senorina Rod, eh? Of course I don't. Hey, you know, I think you very much in love. I, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> That's a very funny. Always the girl she don't know. Not the much she don't know. <laughs> well, maybe I am a little. Sure, sure. Just a little. 
Look here, Signorina Rossi. A girl that don't love a little. Either she loves all over herself or she don't love at all. Mario knows all about it. Mario knows too much. Were you ever in love, Mario? <laughs> Was a Mario ever in love, Signorina? You should ask me that. Well, were you? Signorina, you should be ashamed. Look, how you think I get all these scars on my face? <laughs> how you think I can give you such a good advice, eh? How you think I'm so happy all the time, Signorina? Mario in love. <laughs> Mario's in love all the time. With the same girl? With the same girl? Oh, no, no, no. That's a different. <laughs> you, you didn't ask me that. What for I got to be in love with the same girl? <laughs> That's no fun. <laughs> Mario, you're priceless. <laughs> well, sure, I just... Uh, uh, what do you mean by that, the priceless? You think Mario worth no price, eh? Oh, on the contrary, Mario. <laughs> Mario, look. Uh, what's the matter now? That house up there. That's the one, I'm sure of it. What makes you so sure? Didn't I hear Captain Otis describe it to Dr. Danfield? Yeah, ma, how are you so sure? Well, look, that car parked in front. That's Dr. Danfield. The car Hey, that's all right. That's the doctor's automobile, all right. Come on, we go up in the seat, eh? Oh, no. We don't want to do that. They'll hear us and be ready. Then what do you think we're going to do, Signorina Rossi? Let's, let's park our car in the bushes here and sneak up. Sneak up? <laughs> That's a very good idea, Miss Rossi. We sneak up just like the Indian red man, eh? <laughs> Some fun, eh, Mr. Rossi? <laughs> Professor, I gotta hand it to you. Yes, sir, I gotta hand it to you. You've done all right for yourself. You're a very flattering, Trixie. And uh, now about the proposition you met a little while ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the proposition. Professor, how much dough is in that small change purse of yours? Oh, possibly 10 G's. Just like that, huh? 10 G's, and you don't bat an eye. <laughs> Oh, Professor, you kill me. Now, look. You see that bag sticking out from under the couch? Not unlike my own. It's just like it. What's in it's just like what's in yours, too. Only there's more. More? Yeah. There's more than 15 grand in that satchel, Professor. You don't say. Yeah, I'm saying it. You had that 15 with the 10 you got? Makes a pretty good steak. Don't it, Professor? Need it does. Yes. Yes, a very good steak, Trixie. You get it, Professor? We start out with 25 grand, see? You and me together. We take it from there together. But look here, Trixie, since I have only 10... Oh, sure. So I chip in five more than you. Okay, you've got brains, you've got fancy talk, you're a smart operator. I need a guy like you, Professor. We could go places. Is it a deal? Mm. It's very fair of you, Trixie, but there's one little item I'm afraid you've forgotten. Yeah? Yes. Nick. Nick? Oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh, don't be dumb, Professor. You and me know how to handle guys like Nick. Why, when somebody gets in our way, we... Look at this man up there sneaking up through the woods. You're crazy. No, I ain't. I've seen them. They're coming up. The cops. Oh, shut up. Huh. Hey, Professor, come here. See something, Trixie? I'll say I do. Look out there. Out where? Good heavens. Is there something wrong, Professor? Go with that gun, Trixie. You can't... Friends of yours, huh? There's some associates of mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds as though it were coming from the next room. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's a state grouper. Maybe it's loose. Should I go look, Trixie? Oh, the super who called. How did you know about him? Well, I heard it in the, uh, read it, read it in the newspapers, put it on the radio. You never. It wasn't in no newspapers and it wasn't on the radio. Trixie, this... Shut up, Nick. So, Mr. Professor, you thought you could put one over on Trixie Talbot, huh? Trixie, I think the time has come for us to be frank with each other. Yeah. Nick. Yes, Trixie. Take care of them two outside. Run out the back way and don't ask any questions. Stay here, Nick. You do as Trixie says, you'll regret it. I warn you. Pipe down, you. Go on, Nick. Do like I said. Listen, Trixie. Maybe this you... You gonna obey orders, Nicky boy. Oh, I'm going, Trixie. You don't have to get sore. Now, Professor, this is gonna be a pleasure. Is it? Why not make it doubly pleasurable by first permitting me to explain who I am? For the guy who's going to be knocked off, you got a nerve, mister. Who are you, anyway? The name is Dan Field, Dr. Daniel Danfield. You see, I've made a business of studying unusual types of criminals, such as you, Trixie, and I find... Now, that takes care of your friend, Dr. Danfield. So I'm an unusual type, am I? Indeed you are, Trixie. 
However, I might say that your associate, Nick, is much more unusual. As a matter of fact, he's a type... Is that you, Nick? Come on in. I want you to hear this. This guy says that you're a... I'm sorry, Trixie. The gentleman approaching you from behind is not Nick. No. Don't try to kid me, Tommy. All right, Nick. Nick, speak up. Very funny. <laughs> she thinks that my name is... Why, Nick. you! <laughs> she fights the gold, eh, Doc? Maybe I've fallen in love with her. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... And now for the conclusion of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. And uh, this incident, of course, concluded the case and definitely proved my foregoing statement that outside agencies frequently influence the actions of the criminal mind to... Something wrong, Mr. Fitz? Yes. I hope you don't expect your lecture classes to believe that. Believe what, Mr. Fitz? That it was a woman who influenced Nick to turn bank robber. Mr. Fitz, it was. If it hadn't been for Trixie's influence, Nick would have oh, never been not. a touch. What, Mr. Fitz? I said not. She never influenced men to do anything. Men are too stubborn and ornery and... Miss Fairfax, I'm about to prove your theory untrue. Oh, you are? Yes. Would you mind stepping this way a moment? What do you want? Miss Fairfax, I'd intended spending the afternoon in the library studying. Would you, uh, influence me against this? Would I? Do you mean like that? Yes, Miss Fairfax. Very satisfactory. Well, get your hat. We're going places. 